Welcome to part two of Summit 4x4 Company's adventure to New York City. With the start of the trip underway, we encountered our first hiccup. The gravity-fed transfer tank appeared to be malfunctioning, or so we thought. It's just staying around three quarters, so I think that fuel wow. pump float might be stuck or something, or sending unit might be messed up. With only 400 miles behind us, and this being the first real test of the ram since it was purchased, there was no telling whether the issue would get any worse, or if the additional 60 gallons of fuel would make its way into the primary tank. All right. Yeah, because I filled up that transfer tank. It's, it's jam-packed full, so. After a few short hours, it was time to refuel once again. In investigating the transfer tank issues, it was discovered that we were consuming fuel at a rate higher than that, which the transfer tank could replace. We decided to slow our pace in hopes that it would provide the tank the necessary time to keep the primary tank full. Traveling at what we thought was an acceptable pace, and with our Yeti mugs replenished with Red Bulls, we set our sights on Texas, but not before weathering a classic New Mexico storm in less than normal fashion. Well, we've been having issues with the truck's uh, fuel gauge registering correctly. We got a 60 gallon uh, transfer tank in the back. So total we should have about 90 gallons and uh, it's just a gravity fed transfer tank and we weren't seeing the actual fuel gauge go up on the on the truck. Uh, so we stopped, put gas in it and topped everything off. It didn't change the gauge in the truck. I've tried shutting it off, turn it back on. Um, we were at some little rest stop and just thought, you know what, if something's going on, maybe we'll get this little siphon pump uh, in hopes to be able to siphon some into the main tank if that's really what was going on. And uh, we just ran out of fuel climbing a hill in New Mexico. So we're going to use this little cheap transfer pump and uh, put some diesel in the tank and uh, get going. Well, first of all, I definitely don't recommend this to begin with. This pumps a piece of crap. Second of all, I don't recommend doing it on the side of I-40. But so we didn't have a choice. All right, well, we uh, were able to get a little bit of fuel in it. The goal is just to get us off the damn hill and a little bit to uh, a little safer place for us. So. You know, when you break down, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's always the ideal situations, right? Like, if you need gas, you always break down into gas. No, wait, we didn't. We broke down on the side of the freaking road in the pouring rain, but it's all good. With fuel and the dwindling supply of energy drinks being our limiting factors, the decision was made to stop more frequently and to rely less on the available 60 gallons of diesel fuel behind us. Without further incident, we arrived 950 miles later in Yukon just outside of Oklahoma City. A comfortable bed with the promise of a decent breakfast and coffee was the only motivation we needed to put the day's troubles behind us and wake up rested for the day ahead. Well, we just made it to our first hotel. We did a little over 900 miles today. We're in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City to be exact. So we, uh, we put some miles down today. I think we're both pretty exhausted. Jesse went to go lock the truck up and I'm gonna go to bed. See you tomorrow. Well, good morning, everyone. It's about eight o'clock, which would be six o'clock our time if we're still in Arizona. And we just woke up. We stayed last night at the Best Western Plus. I didn't care what it was as long as it had a bed. I think we were both pretty exhausted after a long day on the road yesterday. So we're just gonna have some continental breakfast this morning and be on the road. Our goal today, I think, is another 900 miles, which is, uh, which is what we did last night. So yeah, I think Jesse's grabbing some food right now, so I'm gonna go join him, and then we're gonna get back in the truck. Coffee acquired. Of course, of course, you're gonna film. I don't have a funnel. Right? Alright, let's check my, my pour skills. 
Oh, 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 fail. Take that out of the video. Alright, could have been a lot worse. With an itching desire to get out of the truck and explore, we found ourselves in Nashville, Tennessee, where we made quick work of offloading Jesse's Jeep. We were eager to tour Broadway Street and experience firsthand the heart of country music. As we approached, we were overwhelmed by street performers and live bands set up like concerts within bars and restaurants appropriately named after their country star owners. Keeping in mind our following day's travels, we opted to listen to a few bands and make our way back to our Hilton home for the night. It was an atmosphere we certainly wouldn't forget, and one that was hard to say goodbye to after a few short hours. Unsure what the following day would bring, we returned to our hotel for some much needed rest with a newfound appreciation for Nashville and the beautiful state of Tennessee. Good morning from Nashville. We uh, are all packed up and ready to hit the road. Our goal today is Roanoke. I think that's about six and a half, six hours from here. We took the JL out last night, had some fun in Nashville. And uh, as you can see, we got it all loaded up this morning and ready to go. Jesse's just checking out and then we're gonna hit the road. So far, everything's been pretty good. The truck's been running nice. Haven't had any issues with that. Um, we did have some issues with the transfer take in the beginning, but uh, I think we've worked through those so far. We cleaned some fittings and stuff and everything's been working good. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Our 53 foot wedge trailer would decide the morning's activities, which included stopping at a local tractor supply for a dust cap that seemingly fell off during our travels over Western Tennessee roads. Check this out. Bam! Signed by Mr. Robbie Gordon himself. Everything you need and some. That's what we'll go with right here. You're gonna pop a little bit of grease in. You don't want to do too much, but at least get some back in there. for good measure. Trailer repairs behind us, it was time to visit the place Jesse was insistent on stopping at since he learned of our trip to New York. Heading to Bucky's. You can't be out here without checking out a Bucky's. We made it to Bucky's. Let's go inside. For some, Bucky's is a place to find a clean restroom, smoked meats, and diesel fuel. For Jesse, Bucky's stands alone as the pinnacle of modern amenities, teeming with displays littered with Bucky's must-haves, the holy grail of truck stops. All right, guys. So there was this uh, big old billboard sign on the side of the road that said these bathrooms will make you smile. So I'm gonna go find out. Two hours later. Holy crap! You guys have never been in a Bucky's bathroom. It is like a huge freaking room. The shit 
toilets have red and green lights, whether they're occupied or not. There's probably 30 urinals, like 50 different wash stations. Absolutely freaking crazy. And we saw a guy wearing a shirt that says, I took a massive sh in a Bucky's bathroom. Pretty cool. To the unassuming traveler, Bucky's is an experience. It's the Walmart of gas stations offering fresh food and drinks, with their specialty being their smoked brisket. We got fresh brisket on the board! Fresh! An hour later and without hesitation, Jesse made his way to the registers with an impressive basket of Bucky's swag. So I'm gonna ask, where are you guys from? We're from Arizona. Are you? Yep, heading to New York. Oh wow, awesome. Oh my gosh, guys. We've got so much good stuff in here. Just wait, I'll show you in a second, okay? Walking into a Bucky's does something to a man, and Jesse is no exception. His new identity as a long haul truck driver empowers him to be bold in both his driving style and fashion sense. I just love Bucky's, it's so good. Everything here is so good. What did you think of Buggies? It's pretty good. I like Buggies. We'll have to come back. Maybe on the way home. You know what my favorite part of Buggies is? What? Beaver Nuggets. Mm. Buggies in the books, it was time to continue our way east. We set our sights on North Carolina, landing in the town of Statesville for the evening. The following morning would bring with it a renewed energy as we drew nearer and our eagerness to reach our destination intensified. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, we are heading out of Statesville. It's not Statesville, Statesville, uh, North Carolina, and uh, heading up to the 81 to avoid, I guess, a bunch of toll roads on the 40, heading east. Um, never driven out here, but we got some recommendations from some good friends. And uh, we're hoping to get some pictures of the rigs out in some of the uh, the foliage, I guess they call it, the, the trees that are changing colors. We're hoping we're gonna run into a bunch of trees like that that are changing colors. Uh, it would make a really cool background to get some photos. Plus, I've never seen anything like that. So, um, yeah, here we are, day four, heading to New York. And uh, yesterday was a pretty uneventful day, thankfully. Just lots of windshield time. And uh, hopefully today will be the same. As we grew nearer to New York, final preparations were made with Fox News for the weekend's broadcast. The rest of the team would be flying in to join us the following day, and any extra time we had to make adjustments to our set was quickly dwindling. Um, the, the each vehicle and then the canopy, what the products are there, and just put, put um, the guest name and title for each of the, I'm going to say five, sections in, so we'll have the four vehicles and then the canopy area with the product, yeah. and just um, put a little bit of background as to what the products are that are on the table, what she'll be talking about, um, so that I can uh, share that with the others as well. And that'll help me to sort of have a little bit, you know, think of anything else that I feel like we might be missing or, um, you know, anything that I can sort of help to make the segment as smooth as possible on Sunday. Just got off the phone with Megan, the producer of Fox and Friends. Um, awesome, great, uh, great news talking with her. Sounds like it's going to be an absolute blast. With a better idea on how the broadcast would be set up and only a few more hours of driving between us and our destination, we pushed onward. But not before Jesse got to experience his first East Coast toll booth. So one thing you got to understand when you come to the East Coast, they got toll roads, okay? Um, they want exact change at some of them, which I didn't have and there was no attendance. So I'm sure I'm gonna get ticketed, but here's one with an attendant. Hi. Ten ten. So, 10 10? You got change? Can I get a bunch of, I had to go, from Arizona, okay? I had dollar bills. I went to one back there and it said exact change and nobody was there. So am I gonna get a ticket? So you are, but because you're not from Jersey, when they do send it to you, you can call them and just complain, look, I didn't know, I mean, nobody has change on them. Um, and nine out of 10 times, they'll wave the fee and let you pay whatever it was. That's okay, okay, 
there. That'd be great. And bridges. Bridges, we went under 13.6. Zach's rig with his antenna is like 13.2. We're talking that much room between the top of the rig and the bridge. So, got to watch the heights. I'm hoping we don't come across anything lower than that. Otherwise, I'm going to be buying Zach a new antenna. And possibly a rooftop tank. Maybe even a whole new rig. I don't know if it rips the freaking top off of his dang forerunner. I might own a forerunner. Good luck, guys. Thanks for your help. All right, appreciate it. There you go. She was nice. Gave me some tips. Hopefully, we'll. Uh... Wow, that's close. Um, get the ticket waived. After navigating tight New Jersey streets, we finally made it to our Airbnb. All right, y'all. We finally made it. It's uh, a little after 11 o'clock on Thursday. Um, come on in, I'm gonna show you my crib. You didn't get that on camera, did you? No. Okay, good. Okay. So welcome. This is home. It's actually my first time being in here, so I have no clue what it looks like. So you guys are seeing it with me for the first time. Oh, isn't that cute? Well, welcome to my kitchen. Lemons. Let's see, uh, first bedroom. Not sleeping in that one. Nope, definitely am not sleeping in this one. All right, another one? Nope. So far, I ain't sleeping in any of these suckers. Right, let's go check upstairs. Maybe that's where, maybe that's where the good bedroom is at. Fingers crossed, you guys. Come on, this has gotta be it. Yes! Woo! This is it! This is, yep, that's what I'm talking about. Look at, they even got me a chair. Look at this, look at this. I even have a chair in here. I've always wanted a chair in my shower. Is this a deck? What? It's another room. Well, that's gonna be awkward. Uh, can I come out? Are you guys decent? It's okay. We'll probably put our daughter in here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the tour of my crew. Wait, the best is yet to come. Come on. <laughs> Maybe the best. So we were told this is the new game room. They converted the garage. Oh my gosh. Well, here's the deal. It'll work. It's better than all the hotels combined that we stayed at. Plus, not only that, we got the crew coming. I got my wife, my daughter coming. Um, so it's going to be great. So hope you guys enjoyed the tour of our crib. got all the rigs off of the truck and uh, we've got probably another 10 minutes before we got to get out of here and go pick up the rest of the crew everyone's flying in here at around 2 30 it's like 2 15 right now so we're gonna pack this up unhook the uh, dually and then head to the airport so we just uh, introduced Jesse to Jersey Turnpike traffic which was fun he said uh, he agrees with me that it's an episode of Mad Max But we are at our terminal, and uh, I think we can see Shad and Jess and uh, Alyssa and Kelly and all them. So we're here. The group is back together. 
which is exciting. We've been looking forward to this since uh, since we left. So. Brother, how are you? Hey, what up, brother? Hi, my dear. Hi. With the crew back together, we opted to check out Times Square before the morning's adventures of setting up the rigs and stage at Fox. That is, of course, after attempting to find somewhere to park the dually. Are you guys on 44? Yes. Well, we're turning we left. We park. Yeah, see, you'll see us. We're down on the right. I don't know if we're allowed to park there or not, but I did. Because there's people in front of me, so. Yeah, I, we're not going to get this truck parked anywhere. Just, just for dinner? Uh, six dollars. Six cents. Will you take credit card? No, it's cash on. The agent is over there. After paying what some might spend on dinner for parking alone, we met up with the rest of the group for a meal we would never forget and to explore the city that doesn't sleep. So, we called up car mines. I said it's like an hour and a half wait. So I slipped the guy a couple bills and uh, he got it knocked down. It wasn't in the bucket, Jesse. It's okay. It's in my budget. Down to 20 minutes from an hour and a half. So just remember that if y'all are in New York and you need to get into a restaurant, just have some 20s in your pocket. It's just a little tip from Uncle Jesse. Okay, are you home on This is my breakfast. My breakfast. Enjoy. With a full day ahead of us, we visited downtown and made our way back to our Airbnb for the night. After 3,000 miles and lots of hard work, the day would finally come, and we were all eager to discover what the morning would bring. What we didn't expect was what happened next.